The Apollo spacecraft will consist of three modules. The command module will carry the three-man crew together with guidance, communications, and life support systems. The service module will contain propulsion systems for mid-course maneuvers, as well as for entering and escaping the lunar orbit. The lunar excursion module will carry two crew members to the surface of the moon, along with scientific instruments, communications, and guidance systems. It also will have a propulsion capability for a lunar landing and for return to the orbiting command and service modules. The Apollo spacecraft and its launch escape system total 75 feet in length. The three-stage advanced Saturn booster adds another 280 feet in length. In Project Apollo, Saturn's first stage will provide seven and a half million pounds of thrust from five F-1 engines for liftoff and initial powered flight. The second stage will develop one million pounds of thrust from five J-2 engines to boost the spacecraft almost into Earth orbit. Immediately after ignition of the second stage, the launch escape system will be jettisoned. A single J-2 engine in the S-4B stage will provide 200,000 pounds of thrust. It will place the spacecraft in an Earth parking orbit. Then its engine will be shut down. At the proper predetermined time and position in the Earth orbit, the S-4B will be reignited for propelling the spacecraft into a translunar trajectory. A few minutes later, staging will occur. The S-4B will be separated, fairings will be jettisoned, and the lunar excursion module will be repositioned to a nose-to-nose -nose attitude with a command module. A number of mid-course maneuvers may be required to place the spacecraft into position for obtaining the desired orbit around the moon. Preparatory to acquiring its lunar orbit, the spacecraft will be reoriented for deceleration. The service module propulsion system will slow the spacecraft to the proper velocity for obtaining a precise circular orbit approximately 100 nautical miles above the lunar surface. While the spacecraft is coasting in its lunar orbit, two members of the crew will transfer to the lunar excursion module through the hatch at the connection point between the two vehicles. After preparations are completed, the lunar excursion module will separate from the command and service modules which will remain in lunar orbit. The lunar excursion module will be properly oriented and its propulsion system will transfer the vehicle into an elliptical orbit suitable for approaching the lunar surface. The vehicle will be reoriented for landing. Then through a carefully blended combination of manual control and automatic systems operation, the vehicle will be lowered toward the lunar surface. It will be able to hover and if necessary move laterally so that the crew can select the touchdown point. Before taking any other action, the two lunar explorers will prepare for relaunching. In addition to their own inspection and checking, they will be instructed and guided in this activity by the third member in the mothership and by information transmitted from Earth. Photographs and samples of the lunar surface will be obtained. Apparatus for continued operation and transmission of scientific data back to Earth probably will be left on the moon. The crew will fire the lunar launching engine at a precisely determined instant to enter a transfer ellipse calculated to rendezvous with the mothership after traveling part of the way around the moon. After proper orientation, the lunar excursion module will complete the docking maneuver. The two lunar explorers will transfer back into the command module. Their lunar excursion module probably will be left in lunar orbit to save weight on the return trip. After the command and service modules are thoroughly checked out and all calculations are confirmed, the Apollo spacecraft will be fired into its trajectory for return to Earth. Following mid-course corrections and just before entering the Earth's atmosphere, the service module will be jettisoned and the command module will be oriented for re-entry.
at an altitude of approximately 50,000 feet, a drogue parachute will deploy to stabilize the vehicle. This will be followed shortly by the main parachute system, which will gently lower the command module to Earth, probably on land rather than at sea.